Sometimes I go to bed a bit early, just to feel cozy, and it is in this cocoon that my thoughts turn to so long ago, usually through a female focal point, and then laterally onto local events, which grants a correlation to the year and the season. It was summer, 1959. I was 12 and a half adrift in boyhood's time of June. The school year had ended a week ago. The whole of Oak Park, Forest Park lay before me and my bicycle. I didn't feel ashamed to use it, but I put my baseball cards in a box and gave them to the kid across the street. I walked down Winona Avenue a block and a half and then one avenue over via Garfield Street toward Ensweiler's store, my destination, located at the corner of Home Avenue, but at the last second headed over across Garfield to strike up a conversation with a girl who was standing at a railing and watching the Congress's expressway being built. I'm friendly, I said to myself to ease my apprehension. There were clunking noises much further down, which had been drawing closer each day, from the large and long metal and linking pieces being driven down far into the ground by a pile driver, to form the basis for a retaining wall. Uh-oh, I thought. She might be young, if not just thin, but there was no turning back now. Hello, I called out. I'm little Lulu. She's not shy, I thought. So, you're a comic book character come to lie? My life is upside down, but I like keeping track of the expressway progress down there. That's me, though I'm more serious than humorous, although at times comedic, but not on purpose. It had begun in 1956. She pointed down and over the wide swath that soon would bear six auto lanes, transit trains in the middle, and freight trains on this side. Lincoln's sixth grade, aren't you? Yes, or I just was. It was boring. Oh. For my first year, I was Austin, my first name. But since my father and grandfather are named Austin too, sometimes all three of us would come when Austin was called. I'm Patrick, which is my middle name. I'm just out of seventh. She almost smiled, but didn't. I would usually beat them, although I could only crawl. She was indeed thin and looked a bit worn. She just stared out across the expanse, which was not what I had expected. It's about a block wide and 25 miles long. Patrick, I'm thinking of all those people that had to be moved, their homes torn down, and that we already poor South Oak Parkers in these last three little blocks of the village are being chopped off, isolated from everything, living on the wrong side of the tracks. There is to be a narrow walking and biking bridge right here at Home Avenue. Yes, we've been severed, or at least separated Lulu from all the rest, but the bright side is that we now have our own little corner of the world right here. So, you've been reading about it? I like information. Yes. And see, they're starting one of the pillars over there, but you're right, of course. And I'm a dreamy optimist. For the situation is now even worse while Oak Park and Harlem Avenues are closed and being turned into temporary bridges. We live in that big apartment building right across there, but our apartment is on the Home Avenue side, so I can't see the expressway from there. You can't come over. No one can come over. I cook, I clean, pay the bills, everything. Well, I'm lucky to be out here, for I have to take care of my mother, but she's sleeping now. We watched some dump trucks still hauling dirt away, this having gone on for at least three years now, although concrete was being put down for the road portion. Hmm, perhaps her mother has alcoholism or the place is messy or both. I'll just leave it alone. It was warm, so I looked over to Ensweiler's and said, I'll be right back. Are you still going to be here? Yes, but just for a while. I returned with two orange double popsicles, giving one to her. She smiled, the first I'd noted, and happily took it. We then silently savored the ice particles being chipped away, the cascade of chill and flavor relieving our dry throats. I like your shoes, they're black and curvy, and your pants look tough. You're perhaps a toughy type of girl with that bandana on the metallic stone necklace and the silver studded belt. I'm tough as nails with the tender yet to come. I feel down today. Stay and talk to me. Hmm. Perceptive. Well, I'm tough in sports, and I can ride a bike for a hundred miles, way out to the prairie and beyond. But I also read a lot, 
and I love nature, adventure, and all things unknown. And so if that be a sweet spot for retreat, mystery, and enjoyment, then my toughness be its contrast but also its protector. She pondered this for a while, as if some heavy pour from a thunderous word storm had just fallen out of the sky onto her fragility, and then asked, as if I was suddenly the source of all knowledge. I like to know things too. How come we're so interested in that big long hole out there? short it's new. Tell me more, Enlong. Well, maybe you think I know things, and I do some, but I am ever learning. Probably something in us reacts to whatever is new so that we might attend to it in case it's going to matter somehow, especially on this large scale, out of this world, monstrous undertaking, and perhaps even a plain old change to a parking lot might seem very interesting for a day or two. I'll let you know if I ever really figure it out. I'm listening, but what else about the expressway? Oak Park is not letting there be any exits totally within it, for security. But just at the east and west ends, at Harlem Avenue and at Austin Boulevard. The last one being way down from here, at the border with Chicago. The ramp at East Avenue was even half done. But now there can't be one there. The reasoning also being that our two high schools are on East Avenue and don't need to have any more traffic. One is Fenwick, isn't it? A Catholic school just for boys? Yes. Boring, just boys. Half the world shut out and Gonsville erased from nature. True, and I'm making sure that I go to the public high school. What else about this eighth wonder of the world? I'm serious. It dominates my scene. Somehow it helps me cope, but for that pounding noise. The on-ramps at Harlem and Austin are in the center so that Oak Park can have less disruption on the side streets of Garfield and Harrison that run all the way alongside. But that means entering and merging onto the expressway into the fast lane, a probable source of accidents. Plus it limits the width here to three lanes each way. But with four lanes in Chicago, meaning that a bottleneck will form during rush hour. Dear old Oak Park, those pounding and clunking noises are driving me crazy. And in a month or so, they'll be right here at my doorstep. I can't take it, they obliterate my thoughts. Puts me on edge. I'm cranky. Yes, and I can hear them at home. Every big clunk only seems to drive the pieces in only an inch or two. The concrete wall around them will keep everything from caving in. Luckily, I may be away in soon. I like meeting neighborhood people. My Catholic school just seems strange. It's not very normal except for a few great kids here and there. My life is far from normal. I had to grow up fast. I do see a serious and weary look about you, but one from which your beautiful features still shine on through. Her face lit up but then went back. My seriousness will turn to wrinkles long ahead of their time. I don't have much time to think or feel. Need help? You like my features, do you? We get some help at times during the school year, and from my friend Sharon Dalton when I'm not around. You can't come over. You are as a flower opening, a dream solidifying to stake its root into world. You're on the cusp. Maybe you need to eat more, if I dare say. You look wonderful. Your features mean business, but there's a beauty and a gentleness, too. Where do you get all this stuff? I read, I look, I learn, I listen. Sounds like crossing a street. I just did, to get to you, Garfield Street. What kind of a name is that, anyway? Our streets are named after the presidents. Didn't Garfield get shot? Great, yes. And Harrison across this big ditch? There were two. One died of pneumonia after about 30 days in office and the other was not very effective. Wonderful, two deadbeats for us. Are the streets in order? At first, yes, for a while with some omissions, but they got mixed up around here. We are the oddballs. 
The next bit surprised me when she revealed, You know, my breasts just started popping out a few months ago as pinpoints and pencil points and then as like felt marker size and some more, but they're not all there yet. Well, that was bold, and if I may be too, I wonder if they feel, you know, tender still. They do, so yes, I am tough and tender, haha, -ha, and I don't know why I told you. Sometimes I just blurt things out. Back and forth talk and life is fine sometimes, but time just has to move for me much quicker. It's because little Lulu is torn across many worlds. I'll be away for a month or so at my father's, probably leaving as soon as tomorrow. I'm not at my best right now. She has to go now. Next time I see you, you will be Lucille, I called after her. She turned and waved. Yeah, I will be, won't I? See you then, promise? Yes, yes, I'll try. And with that, Lulu walked away, leaving behind a chapter of her life as she stepped into the unknown. What a strange afternoon it had been. It going just like that. So brief, and near mystical yet holding the mysterious promise of the more enduring. She, in her rare and younger maturity that could only flower and fulfill itself more grandly this glimpse of magic and honesty arriving during a week in which nothing else had really happened at all, but for us getting our new baseball uniforms. Well, we give ourselves happily unto the world, planting seeds of joy along the often barren and rocky way but can never quite know the twists and turns of the seedlings if they even be and if they can even form stalk which may go on to wither and die or grow strong enough to spread and bloom with flowers to show their colorful, bright and sunny faces to us and to heaven. She liked particulars, and so I'd given them. For a moment life had giveth, and then it had taken away, ever the blessing with the curse. Well, the time had been fine and then she had to walk away. If this was our last goodbye, then it had come near before a real hello, although it had gone well enough. Well, I wouldn't say nothing at all happened of late, for I had kissed someone a few months ago, and that was sacred, and I wanted it to stay that way, as my first kiss, plus with baseball, touch football, pool, biking, tennis, and friends. It wasn't like I was going to give up all that to hang out with a now unavailable sixth grade girl. Well, okay, going into seventh. But I was headed for eighth, only a grade apart, but this was a gap seemingly as wide as an expressway at this time in life, but she did say that she was old for her grade. So then, why was I camped just a few houses down Home Avenue on Michael's front porch the next day with him of all kids at a place I'd never been? For he was an ungraceful type who had aggravated everyone girls and boys alike. Maybe I could head him in a better direction. Well, yes, maybe, but he seemed intractable. I'd tried before. He was hopeless, I thought, at least for now. I was here to watch for Lulu. Half the day went by. I really needed to be practicing pitching somewhere. A car finally drove up. Lulu's father stood about it, not looking happy. He tapped his fingers on the roof. He waited, then called out, let's go, Lucy. Lulu came out carrying a large suitcase, its size suggesting that she'd be gone for a long time. Did she look my way? I couldn't really say. After baseball practice, I returned to our expressway perch and sat down to read a book, losing track of time. Nothing happened. I returned the next night with another book, gliding away to exotic lands within its pages there was nothing to expect. It just felt good to be here, to sense the aura, to prolong its lingering. Dusk fell. A bit later, a woman came out of Lulu's apartment, evidently her mother, and she so very slowly walked down Garfield toward Forest Park. My head was still looking into my book, but I had slightly shifted my eyes to above the top of the page. I couldn't make out her features, though. I didn't have to follow her, for I'd seen her before, carrying a bottle home in a paper bag, bought in Forest Park near my St. Bernardine School, at Harlem Avenue, where there was a bar I'd seen her in, for we'd often gone bowling next door. Oak Park was dry, nowhere to buy a bottle, no bars at which to buy a drink. When she came back I was gone.
The next day, I gave Michael five dollars, asking him to keep an eye on Lulu's apartment, you know, nothing obvious, but just when he happened to be on the porch or outside, I then bought a popsicle and checked on the expressway for a bit, then wrote a note on the popsicle wrapper and put it under a rock, but with some of the writing showing. I'd probably have to restore it if it got too wet or faded. I often used this street, and so I could attend to this little hope. I felt silly. I didn't know what might become of what I was doing, but it felt good to be doing something. Meanwhile, Michael had long since reported about a blonde girl coming down the alley and out and around to Lulu's apartment. On some days, she leaving a while later with a bag of trash that she'd deposit in the trash bin in the alley and then walk on. I prompted him for more details. Mike, when she got to the end of the alley after throwing the trash, which way did she turn? Mike looked perplexed, as if why would he be watching her walk all the way away? Mike, I know you've dropped out of Lincoln School, but you do remember seeing her there in your class. And she is beautiful, isn't she? I saw Sharon. She turned left. I watched her all the way each time. Couldn't take my eyes off of her. Did she arrive from the alley too? Yes. Did she look happy? Huh? Yeah, she was prancing and maybe even singing. Do I get another five dollars? Yes and no, since I'm not rich, but here's another three for your trouble, and in case anything else comes up. So there it was. Left. There was but an apartment building there, on Garfield and Kenilworth. Then nothing but the new expressway dig. This girl had to be Sharon, she taking the shortest way around. If she lived further down, then she'd take Garfield all the way, for her arrival at least. I'd seen her at Carroll Playground, where we had softball games. There were not many things, events, or people that could escape my all-seeing eyes. My best friend, also named Patrick, had liked her, but had noted her youth, she thus having been classified as still being on the underside of that great divide known as puberty. Wait till he sees her now or in a few months. Her entrance had to be on Kenilworth, and so it was. For I looked, but didn't proceed. For it looked like Lulu had everything taken care of. For her mother. Plus, it wouldn't be right to befriend her friend before I knew Lulu better. There were limits to this game, but information was still info. So they were close, Sharon and Lulu, a team but kind of like sun and moon opposites, blonde brightness and a happy-go-lucky shine at large versus the brunette darkness and the worn life of a dark gothic world of drink on one's shoulders. The boys would eventually all fall for Sharon, on sight. Yet Lulu was beautiful too, though more at first as an elfin waif, she more dwelling within, with deeper cares and thoughts, which would be perfect for one-on-one, -on -one, which I was good at. What was I? I was sunshine too, true, but many lights shone for me, a wider view that went all ways, even with studying mixing with sports, but was ever a romantic overall. So I was the stars. The beautiful combination of light and dark, night and day, for the stars were suns. I was happy for them. What more could I do? I had not intruded, spied, yes, but just out of love, curiosity and concern. Did I say, love? No, it couldn't be. It was just the newness, like the expressway, but it was a rather large newness, just the same. Catchy music kept playing in my head. Since it wouldn't leave, I embraced it. I floated on its strains. It was her, yes. And then it came to be accompanied by Martin Denny's A Taste of Honey that Pat Hickey had played for me. Five weeks had now passed. We all been hanging out a lot with Judy, Vicky, Peggy, and some others from Maple Avenue. Fun, but not worth a lot of mention, but for Judy. Kid stuff. Michael had walked over to my house to give me an ambulance report. Lulu's mother had fallen outside, had been taken away and then had been returned the next day, 